President Trump's allies in the media have spent almost a year trying to discredit this probe. They've been acting like there's something to hide. But, you know, the president's lawyers and spokespeople have all preached cooperation up until now. They've said Trump is cooperating, he's going along with it, etc. But now, this weekend, that has changed. They are saying the investigation seems illegitimate. One of Trump's lawyers says he's praying that the investigation gets shut down. And Trump himself is tweeting Mueller's name for the very first time ever, saying the Mueller probe should have never started at all. Now, the president says there was no crime, even though people have already pled guilty. He also says the special counsel's office is stacked against him. It feels like we're inching closer to the edge of a cliff. Imagine two trains on two parallel tracks, because right now I see two very different stories depending on what outlets you're reading and watching. First, let's look at the pro-Trump media side. Trump's media allies started the week by cheering the House Republicans' statement that they found no evidence of collusion. Now, the investigators didn't interview key witnesses, but never mind that pesky fact. This was celebration mode. And then came the news that an FBI internal watchdog thought Deputy Director Andy McCabe should be fired instead of being allowed to retire quietly. Boom, this was more good news for the Janine Piros of the world. They had been lobbying for this for months. This guy, McCabe, needs to be taken out in cuffs. They should not be paid by the American people. McCabe is corrupt, and he is as crooked as they come. He is one of those deep state actors that we have been telling you about. On Friday night, AG Jeff Sessions followed through, delivering a win to the Hannity's of the world, firing McCabe, giving Trump and his fans a huge victory. Now, Trump cited this on Twitter as proof of lies and corruption inside the FBI, then continued down this track I'm describing and said the Mueller probe never should have started. So that's one track. Picture that track. Now, picture a parallel track where there is no cheering. On Monday, stories about the House ending its investigation also pointed out that the Mueller probe keeps expanding. On Tuesday, a new book came out titled Russian Roulette. It instantly became the number one best-selling book in the country. Co-author David Korn says this. I think Trump, as we say in the book, aided and abetted the Russian attack on American democracy by helping them sort of cover up and confusing the picture about it. On Thursday, the New York Times broke the news that Mueller has subpoenaed Trump's businesses, the Trump Organization. Now, according to the Times, Trump was particularly angry about this revelation. And you know what has happened since. Trump weighing in for the first time directly about Mueller, saying the probe shouldn't have started, once again escalating his attacks against the law enforcement community. These are two parallel tracks, two different narratives about what's going on in America right now. now let's talk about the consequences, potentially, of all this. Uh, Jeff Greenfield is here, longtime political analyst, and also joining me in New York, Alicia Menendez, former anchor for Fusion, now a contributing editor to Bustle. Just want to try to chew through these counter narratives, these dueling narratives that we're seeing, Jeff, uh, about the Mueller probe. Seems to me Trump's allies are cheering about McKay being fired. They're agreeing with the president that the Mueller probe never should have started. Uh, and yet, I'm seeing a lot of concern uh, from uh, establishment types that the firing of Bob Mueller could be back on the table, and that could be very dangerous for democracy. Yeah. Well, this is Groundhog Day. Why? Because for a year, we've been basically, or at least since uh, Comey was fired, we've been actually talking about the same thing. People alleging serious issues involving the Trump campaign and the Trump uh, presidential behavior. Yeah. And Trump's allies saying whatever you hear from these sources is fake and is therefore not to be believed. I mean, I feel like you could play a tape of me for the last four times I've been on. <laughs> um, the, the fact that Barry McCaffrey the other day, retired four-star general, pretty much conservative, said this president is a serious threat to national security. Now, in other times, that would have been a shocker. But once again, you, you're getting the situation where the Trump supporters say, I don't care. We don't believe it. He's corrupt. He's deep state. And the last part of Groundhog Day is until and unless the people who control the Congress actually find that Trump has crossed a line that they will hold him accountable for, I don't believe any of this makes much difference. I want to jump on that last point because I think that's where it becomes the responsibility of journalists to start asking congressional Republicans what that tipping point is, where that red line is, when they're going to be willing to call Trump out. You know, up until this point, there has been this idea that, that they're not willing to do that because they have midterms coming up and Trump is very popular among their base. But as you have this chaos play out, both the turnover in the White House and the actual policy chaos that is that we are seeing, 
seeing, where you have the president on one day saying one thing about immigration reform, coming out another day saying something different. 800,000 young people's lives thrown into chaos over that, whether you see the Dow dropping 200 points, uh, punitive tariffs. There are so many reasons that the American public can look at this presidency and say, is this chaos something that I am willing to reckon with in my own life? Mm. And the more that Americans begin to process that, I think the greater likelihood you see of Republicans being willing to question the president. Yeah, I think you look at the president's tweets, the new tweets from today about Mueller and about McCabe and the FBI. On the one hand, it's just tweets, right? It's just rage tweeting. He's just angry. On the other hand, he's the president of the United States taking out his anger on the law enforcement community. And I noticed what Jeff Zeleny, our, our colleague here at CNN, uh, said on Twitter a couple hours ago. Let's put it on screen. He said, hey, does President Trump know something that we don't? Coming coming down the pike that we don't know about. This morning's tweet storm, he said, attacking the investigators seems to be a sign of something brewing. But I think we have seen this kind of behavior almost from, from the beginning. In fact, before he was ever elected. I mean, in a sense, when you go back all the way back to the campaign when Trump was saying, if I lose, it's because it's rigged, you have an absolute consistent behavior. And what I think has so far worked for him is that for all of this behavior, once again, the people who have the power, the only people who have the power to hold him to account for this are not doing it. I don't know how many times I've heard Speaker Ryan say about one Trump behavior, and, well, this is troubling. Yeah. I'm concerned. Right. But, but the argument that the president has been making since before he was the president, whatever you hear about me that is critical, by definition is false because these people are lying. What he did in his tweets this morning, about memos. This is about McCabe having memos just like Comey. Right. Trump said, can we call them fake memos? And by the way, just quickly, Lawfare, a very respectable uh, website, has said, you know, there might be reasons why uh, uh, the firing of this deputy director was justified. These were career officials who made that choice. Um, and so it's very important, I think, for us as journalists to, to try to separate what is just angry and false tweeting from issues that might be more serious. Journalists can also sit here and until we're blue in the face saying, this is troubling, this is concerning, this seems dangerous, uh, and yet the real power lies with Republicans in Congress to be a check on the president. I think that's, that's where this conversation comes back to is, what are we hearing from those people in power, Alicia. Right, I mean, if you have a bifurcated media market where there are people who believe that there's real news and fake news, then you need an established messenger that they believe is a real messenger to come in and actually break through that dichotomy. Um, you know, today you had Senator Marco Rubio on this week with George Stephanopoulos, asked about the Mueller probe, saying that he has faith that it will be carried out. Those are the types of questions that need to be continued to ask, be asked. And I think that, you know, we will see more of those questions in the next few weeks. And Jeff Flake on State of the Union, which comes up again in an hour saying, I just hope Trump isn't laying the groundwork to fire Mueller because it just can't happen. Uh, one more note on this, one of the unintended consequences of President Trump's focus on the FBI and McCabe and fire director James Comey is that he seems to be helping Comey's book sales. Check this out. This is the pre-order uh, for a higher loyalty. This is Comey's book comes out in a month. It's already number two on Amazon, even though the book is still not out. Uh, I think this has a lot to do with the president's tweet yesterday. Comey responded to the president by saying, the American people will hear my story very soon and they can judge for themselves who is honorable and who is not. So Comey's book, number two on Amazon, number four on Barnes & Noble. Jeff, I think it's a repeat of fire and fury. The president's angry, anger at Michael Wolff actually helped sell copies of Michael Wolff's book. Yes, and you, you know what it takes to be, I mean, Michael Wolff's book is unprecedented. It might have sold as many as a million copies, but 61 million people voted for Donald Trump. And the, the question to be asked is, is any of what you're describing uh, not only going to move the Republicans in Congress, but will it move the people who voted for him and find him their hero? You know, the, the, possibly the most accurate thing the president's ever said is the famous line that I could go out in Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and it <laughs> wouldn't change my ratings. And at times I almost think he's trying to semi-test that theory. Hmm. And so far, one of the questions I would ask my colleagues, anybody else, is what could Trump do that would make his base gay say, ah, oh, maybe not? So divides in the media uh, are partly a, just a, a symptom of a greater divide in the country. Yeah, absolutely. Involving profound partisanship. Tribalism. Uh, that we're suffering from. Yeah. yeah.